Retrieving files from packet captures, brute forcing steganography, and redirecting USB devices. All that and more on this episode of Hack 5. This week's episode of Hack 5 is brought to you by Netflix. Go to www.netflix.com slash hack5 to get your free trial membership. GoToAssist Express. Support smarter with GoToAssist Express. And Domain.com. Your next big idea starts at Domain.com. Hello and welcome to Hack 5. My name is Darren Kitchen. And I'm Shannon Morse. And this is your weekly dose of Technolus. And I am so excited because we have a fantastic show. In fact, we've got like two shows, at least we do. You'll get them on a regular weekly basis. Oh, you but mean this week. Right. Yes. But, you know, because we're now all out here. You were actually gone we're for a while. A routine. Yeah, I went to Texas. How was that? It was so awesome. Uh, my brother just graduated from Air Force. Go a 326 BMT. Uh, I think it was 174 flight or something like that. I don't know. All sorts of crazy numbers. But go, you guys. Um, really support you guys. And That's cool. I'm very, very proud of my brother. Cheers so to the forces. Wearing my, You've got a brother in the Air Force. Proud, proud I got sister a sister in the Air Force. Shirt. Yeah. It's, it's so awesome that she's moving that to thing. Tokyo for the Air Force. I'm jealous. My That's brother crazy. put a bunch of East Coast places, and I was like, man, move to Japan. So yeah. we'll no, see where no he joke, goes. Right? Don't know yet. Mm. But it was it was very fun. Well, it's good to have you back here. Um, we're trying to kind of figure out a regular shooting schedule. So if you're into watching the show live, I think we're probably going to start shooting on Wednesdays, which means that we've got two shows back to back to produce. Um, and that's one of the reasons why, unfortunately, I know I so teased this guy for <laughs> sorry, uh, for, for this oh, episode. Sorry. But actually, it's going to be uh, on the next one just because I have to shoot it tonight. And then anyway, with a bunch of stuff. But you're gonna, you guys are going to really love it. I think we got some great stuff involved with it. But we have some really cool things from RSA to get into. In fact, this isn't an actual segment, but one of the neatest things we saw at RSA yeah. was the NSA had a booth there. Wow, really? <laughs> yeah, so I go to the NSA and I'm like, so NSA, what product are you showing off? You know, like, <laughs> and, awesome. and they're, what did uh, they say? well, they, they were actually showing off an Enigma. One of the, uh, from like World War II, yeah. like the code box, and that was just so cool. I got to play That's with awesome. one. I almost broke it. Yeah, but they, they didn't, yeah, they didn't punish me. Okay, Love so, <laughs> can I stay on the good side with the NSA? Let me tell you. Yeah, might be a good thing. Yeah. So that's what's going on this week, uh, as well as we've got stuff about the Crack the yes. Code Challenge. Yeah, I'm, I'm going to show you step by step how to do the Crack the Code Challenge that we did this past weekend and announce the winners. Stenography, brute forcing, and a little bit of packet sniffing goodness with yeah. some extracting files from packet capture. That, that's a lot of fun. Good stuff. Yep. Um, but I figure, why don't we just go right into it and get into the headlines. Because if you are bummed that you, like me, did not get your hands on one of those Google C48 Chrome notebooks, well, check it out. There's an alternative instant on OS called Splashtop Linux. It's been available, uh, and it's now available for download. It's been available previously for like, you know, pre-installed on machines from like Asus and Acer and, and Dell and some others. But this 1.0 release, check this out, this makes this trimmed down Linux 2.6, you know, it's X11 based OS, available for the public. Nice. So you can get in on that now. Yeah. It's like, boom, instantly on. But you're excited about that? Well, <laughs> I like, I had it on my last Asus. I don't have it on my new Acer, so maybe I will. Yeah, maybe. And Samsung has made a ROM based on Android 2.3.2, which is gingerbread, for the i9000 series that just leaked to the net. Yay! All of the changes haven't been determined quite yet by the users that have downloaded this, but if you don't have an i9000 model, you still have to wait for an update to your Galaxy S devices. So I'm kind of looking forward to seeing what the users out well, there can do with the ROM. I'm really excited about it. I'm on a Galaxy S here, yes. and I'm still on 2.1. It's like, come on, Galaxy. And now yours like, isn't an i9000, right? Well, no, but it's the same family. It's same a, family. Um, okay. it's on Sprint, so it's an epic 4G, but yeah. Oh. So Samsung's been, you know, doing that to all of us Galaxy S users for yeah, a while. Well, I hope you get it soon. Well, guess what <laughs> Sony's doing? Well, they're not taking the PS3 hacks lightly, as German hacker Graf Chocolo just recently found out when authorities raided his house early in their week, took his equipment and his accounts, it sucks, man. I don't man. know what I would do. Yeah, check it out. So he posted on his hypervisor reverse engineering blog, quote, 
Sony was today at my home with police and got all my stuff and accounts. And then hours later on, uh, he posted the hypervisor Bible as he, <laughs> as he uh, puts it. Uh, links have since been removed to comply with legal notices and of stuff, course, but yeah. you know, nothing's really diluted from the net. Hmm. Dang, you know, him and Gia yeah. hot, man, the Sony. Yeah, you know it's out there somewhere. And check this out, Nintendo 3DS, it's been out for a day in Japan and it's already been hacked. <laughs> yes. Well, much like the original DS. Oh yeah, I mean, it takes no time. The Tech On group has already gotten their hands on the 3DS, the 3DS and they torn it tore it apart to look at all of the del delicious insides, including the 3D display, which they kind of figured out what that one is. Along with the hardware, Ayasuke2 on YouTube has already hacked the 3DS to run R4 cards and play unauthorized Nintendo DS games. Yeah, the R4 is where it's at, man. That is I, so inexpensive, yes. too. You can um, get the R4 for like under 10 bucks, man. If you're gonna yeah. do some homebrew on the DS, I like, you wouldn't know I like anything about R4. that, though. <laughs> Yeah, I don't know anything about them, but I like the R4. Would you know anything about getting encapsulated inside of Carbonite? No! Well, Han Solo knew, and attendees <laughs> at the tangible, embedded, and embodied interactive conference here got to scan themselves in 3D using a hacked Microsoft Connect That's... and then print out the resulting STL file on a uh, stair analysis or sterolysis or sterosis, whatever. Stratus. 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 Thank Stratus. you, that's the word. Anyway, a 3D printer. It's not the maker bot. <laughs> you know, we actually that's have cool. a maker bot, so we should try that out. There's, Wait, there's, you do? Yeah, well, there's one upstairs. No way. Yeah, my roommate's got a oh, laser cutter, okay. a maker bot, okay. CNC, everything. You name it. Yeah, that's okay. I'm, I'm kind of excited. So, you want to hear about the Crack the Code Challenge? Yes, I'm super excited because it was so much fun to host. Did you have what it took to compete in the Crack the Code Challenge? Six of our Hack 5 viewers did this past Sunday. Mad props go out to Netshroud for being the first to crack the code, as well as Jellyfish, John, Alex, Leo, and Tristan. A big thanks go out to all that participated, joined the live stream and chat, and of course, go to Assist Express for sponsoring our Hack 5 Lab Network. We'll have details on the next challenge on next week's show, so be sure to tune in. Coming up, we'll be diving into the challenge, how it was put together, and how it was completed using packet analysis, steganography, and brute force. But first, let's thank Citrix for GoToAssist Express. If you're an IT or software consultant, you're always looking for ways to be more competitive. You need to grow your business, but you can't be in two places at once. That's why I recommend remote support with the new GoToAssist Express. The faster you connect to a customer, the faster you can move on to the next challenge. With GoToAssist Express, you'll increase revenue by handling more support requests, reduce travel time and overhead costs, support clients even when they're not at their computer, rise above the competition by providing faster and more professional service. Hack5 viewers can try GoToAssist Express free for 30 days. For this special offer, visit gotoassist.com slash hack5. That's gotoassist.com slash hak5 for a free trial. Okay, major spoiler alert. If you haven't participated in the Crack the Code Challenge, but you really want to, because you know we actually post it on Facebook and Twitter, you do follow us on those, right? About how you can play at home at hack5.org slash ccc, download the puzzle and do it at home. Well, FYI, we're about to break it down for you because it's time for the... Uh, what? Stop your point. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like, well, we're gonna go with that. Crack the Code Challenge? Wait. Yes. Oh, okay, yeah, so over the weekend, we hosted the Crack the Code Challenge. I'm sure you guys may have heard of it, maybe, I don't know. But um, yeah, the challenge involved two main tools, and I'm gonna go over those for you. Yay! Yeah, we basically like put together, yeah, I love that. Yeah, everybody logged in, they had all this good Hi. stuff on their desktop, and you know what was great? <laughs> is uh, everybody's on a Windows XP Service Pack 2 machine completely unpatched and they're like trying yes. to uncover all of this stuff and we had like, I don't know, like at least 30 something people on at any given time. Wow. And, uh, and it was great because Paul was like totally helping me like get people in like boom, 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 we were yeah. streaming live, it was so much fun. And dude, um, this one guy, we like echoed different machines because we can like pop in on VNC and see their, their session, like see what they're doing. And, and we're like, oh, hey, look at this guy. He's already like, he's almost there, right? And hey, look at this guy. He's not even trying with the Crack the Code Challenge. What is he doing? <laughs> oh, he's in Metasploit. He's owning oh. other machines and he was literally going into people's desktop and deleting the challenge. No, he 
was it? Yeah, he was oh deleting the God. files off of their desktop wow. so they couldn't compete. And it's like, oh. that's one way to win. Just own that's, all your neighbors. That's kind of funny. <laughs> that's was a that, fun thing that about the challenge. I don't know. I, I, <laughs> no, it was, that, that was actually Somkin. I wasn't going to give him a shout out. Now I got one. Yeah, and then that's Moonlit funny. showed up later. It was great. It was nice. great. And it's Joe Eagle. Sorry, I could do this all day. Lots oh, of people from IRC got involved. I got excited. I do. It's fun to play okay, with the community. Well, we got we to gotta show them how to do it now. Okay. All right. I'm sorry. But you can help. Yes. Okay, cool. Yes. So I'm going to go over to the two tools, Network Miner and Steg Hide, and Darren is going to go over how they figured out the password. All right. Ooh. So first of all, Steg Hide. That's a steganography program that's able to hide data in various kinds of images and audio files, and then you can use it to extract those files, all the information that's in them, as well. Yeah, you've done a segment on that. I did. So you should check that out, that Back one in, um, in the, in the fifth season. Yeah, episode that's the one. Episode 512. And then Mubix a did number. a segment on 514 about Network Miner. Network Miner is a network forensics analysis tool for Windows. It can be used to as a passive network sniffer or packet capturing tool in order to detect operating systems, sessions, host names, open ports, all sorts of other stuff without putting any traffic on the network. So it's is, a packet sniffer like yeah, Wireshark. It's really cool. But it's easy because it breaks it down. And it can also parse PCAP files for offline analysis and to regenerate or reassemble transmitted files and certificate certificates from those PCAP files. That's the best, is reassembling yes. the files, because you're so, like, you, know, you can watch the Wireshark yeah. and see the TCP stream, and it's like, oh, they went to these websites, but what they download? Here's the zip file of what they downloaded. It's, yeah, it's, it's pretty fun. So today I'm gonna show you exactly how to do it step by step. So first of all, what we're going to do is download this zip file, and I already downloaded it, where's it at? It's oh, it's at hackfi.org slash ccc dot, uh, dot zip. Dot zip, okay. So I already unzipped it, and I put it into my little local disk C drive up here. Right there. Ta -da! All right. So double click on that, and you see all this different kind of stuff in here. There's a packet capture file right here called I can has packets, readme.jpg, and then we have the Steghide network miner and this one called Cypher Realm. Okay. Mm -hmm. What's that? So... This readme file, that's the first thing I see, because I'm like, oh, JPEG, yay, picture. So I open that up slowly on my little machine here. I has a secret code. I hides it on the network. Oh, it's an adorable, cute little picture of Kirby. I In a filthy it. bathtub In from a like disgusting eight, bathtub. nine, ten years ago. I think that's, is that the hack house uh, bathtub? No, the apartment, the hack apartment oh, from season God. one. She must have been a kitten. She was a little kitten. Oh. Anyway, this is so, not about kittens, though. No. So basically, it's telling us we need to look for something that has to do with Kirby because she's hiding some kind of code on the network. So keep Kirby in mind. Next thing we're going to do is open up Network Minder. Miner, excuse me. Network Miner. And here's the exe, so I'll enter. From Network Miner, you can open the iconhaspackets.pcat file. And then once that is finished, which I'll open that right now. And I can has packets. Open that up. And it's going to take a couple of seconds to read it, but once it's done, I'll look around and I'm going to see a whole bunch of files, different kinds of images, all sorts of other kind of stuff. Now, keep in mind, we're looking for Kirby. And this is short for? Kerberos. Kerberos. What does that mean? Well, it's an authentication protocol. Yes. Not, not having so much to do with the challenge, but that's just cute trivia about Hack5. And it's the kitta that has been involved in uh, the show. Yeah, well, other than five, I was almost going to name the cat five because then it would be cat five. And then I was like, no, because then they'd upgrade and have to get cat six or cat five e. Uh, you this would. is really bad. Okay, so it's done. And we know we're looking for Kerberos or Kirby or something that has to do with a cat. So looking through here, under file tab, I'm going to look through the file names because I have a feeling that, haha. There we go. Kerberos.jpg. That's exactly what I was looking for. Yeah, or if you go into images, you'll just see a picture of her right there. Yes, so you can open the folder from here, and there's a cute little picture of Kirby. Kerberos.jpg. Aw, how adorable. So I'm going to copy this picture into, oops, into the Steghide folder, because I know that Steghide can do that kind of stuff. It can find out if there's any you know, hidden data in there. So I'll copy it over here. OK, so I have Steghide opened up right here. So I want the info on the kerberos.jpg. So I'm going to type in Steghide info uh, kerberos 
dot jpeg and enter and get information yes of course enter passphrase okay so this is where how the passphrase do I, how do comes i know up. what that is well there's a couple of different ways to go ahead and get it see the packet capture is actually following uh, some actually a web browsing session that I did earlier when I went to the Hack5 forums and then I went to a special website. And if you actually, you know, if you track down the uh, TCP stream, uh, you can actually see that I went to hack5.org slash ccc27a. Okay. Now there's actually in the same folder CCC as it an index.html. And if you, oh. if you look at the index.html, view the source, there's a comment that says nothing to see here. But if you go to that website, yeah. hack5.org <laughs> slash uh, ccc27a, view the source, there's actually a riddle that has to do with my birthday. And if you go over to Facebook or oh. use Maltigo or anything on me, what was the you can riddle? find out. It just basically asked you what, what month oh, I was okay. born in, which is February. February, yay! So that's, that's pretty much, uh, that's the password right there. The other way to do it is uh, doing a brute force attack. And I kind of hinted to that in the packet capture because the packet capture went over to the hack5.org slash forms, I went over to the episodes, and I, I don't know what's going on. There's been this uh, discussion thread going on called hack5 darknet question mark. Wow. And on the 13th page here, there's a post from a guy named Cypher Round. Cypher Round okay. has put together a Perl ah, script that folder. brute forces Steghide passwords. You can find it over at cypherround.blogspot.com, and it is his Steg Crack Perl script. And uh, That's in cool. fact, that exact Perl script was included with the ccc.zip right there alongside Network Miner and Steghide. Huh. So it was kind of a little hint. Yeah. Yeah. So uh, any word list worth you know, it's salt is going to have, have all of the months of the year. Yeah. yeah, I mean, it has to. Yeah, and okay. this is why we don't use words as passwords, but you know, for the challenge, come on. Yeah. Had to make it an easy one. Let's see. Okay, so February. Okay, so now I want to extract the whatever info is inside of this picture. So right, so it says that there's secret.txt inside there. Secret.txt. Ooh, I wonder what it could be. All the evil villains name them like secret evil plans. Steg hide extract. Doc X. SF, uh, what is it again? Kerberos.jpg. Yep. And I'll hit enter. And passphrase again. February. Enter. Road extracted data. All right. Now, to show the contents of the file, I also have to type in type secret.txt. And there we go. Okay, so congratulations, you won. Email Darren at hack5.org with the code and the special code got them in. Yeah, and don't email me anymore because we are done. The winners, <laughs> although we have six winners and we got to give a mad shout out to Net Shroud being the first. Yeah. And then like right after him, Jellyfish was like, oh my God it. John, you know? Alex, Alex, Leo, and Tristan all won the challenge. Yeah. So mad props to you guys. Dude, you guys are entering. the elite. Elite hacks orcs. You guys have some <laughs> ideas for new stuff too. Uh, I, I, I guess I shouldn't mention it right now, but Mubix was telling me about some CTF stuff that he. Uh, so I don't want to give away any hints right now, but it's including oh, JPEGs. Man. Will you give me hints after we? Oh, this is, uh, yeah. Jitten? Yeah. All right. Cool. Some backstage, backstage hints. Hey. So anyway, <laughs> we want you to send your feedback over to feedback at hack5.org, and you know this is a perfect opportunity using these tools, these command line goodness to transition right over to the hack tip because last week we were talking about command line packet sniffers and tools of that nature and we just got a great submission so check this out. Now I like TCP dump and ngrep for filtering but Steve Z wrote in and was quick to point out that T-Shark is a command line counterpart for Wireshark, which we all know and love, and it's got rule filtering built in. It's quickly become one of my favorites for all of my packet sniffing needs. So for example, if I type in T shark tac r and then bang tcp.port equals 53 and UDP and IP.address equals, I don't know, 10.73.31.55, not like that's anything, and then tac i my interface eth0 here, I'm gonna go ahead and be able to sniff just UDP packets that aren't on port 53, like DNS, and that are from the address that I've specified. So, do you have any gems that are rocking your world? Hit us up, tips at hack5.org, share them on the show. And of course, we will be back in just a bit after a quick word from one of our sponsors. I'm getting really excited with these hack tips. 
With more than 20 million members, Netflix is the world's largest subscription service, instantly streaming TV and movies over the internet and sending DVDs by mail. Netflix members can receive unlimited DVDs and internet streams to computers and televisions without worry of due dates and late fees. As a Netflix Unlimited member, watch thousands of titles anytime you want on a vast array of devices like Microsoft's Xbox 360, Sony's PS3 game console, or the Nintendo Wii console. Hack 5 viewers get a free trial membership at www.netflix.com slash HAK5. Sign up now with this URL so they know we sent you. Five. For Act 5, I'm Darren Kitchen here at Blockmaster RSA 2011 talking to Moses. How are you, Moses? Excellent. So, uh, tell me, these USB drives, you've, you've partnered here with Kingston, one of the largest USB drive manufacturers. Uh, what new are you bringing to security on USB? Well, uh, the cooperation with uh, Blockmaster and uh, Kingston uh, brings uh, secure drive management to, uh, to the Kingston drives. Uh, those hardware encrypted uh, drives. Right, but I mean, I could just go and pick a USB drive off the shelf and put like TrueCrypt on it. How is this different? Well, uh, those drives are hardware encrypted using a AES-256, uh, which prevents you from uh, from uh, brute force attacking them. I mean, they will just you know lock down when you enter the wrong password too many times. Right. So there's not like a volume that you can copy off the drive and no, then try to brute force not. later. Is it? Is it? Could you do like a bit for bit, or is it seriously tied to? the chip in the hardware. It is. I mean, you, it, it's not possible to take the data off the device, uh, the encrypted data, and then try to, to attack it. Uh, the data is, is locked into the device. Uh, and I mean... So as a user, when I plug this into my computer and I, I enter my password to unlock the volume, what happens and what, what does that mean to me, let's say like as a systems administrator versus a user? Uh, well, you get access to, to the data uh, as a uh, as a user. Uh, the, the encryption is performed by the uh, by the hardware. Uh, the, the key is derived from the user password, so it's not even stored on the device. Uh, as a uh, as, as an administrator, you're you're secure that the data on the device is protected. I mean, if if a user drops the device anywhere in the world, uh, nobody will be able to recover the data except the original user, of course. Right. Now what I think what's really interesting and unique about this is the way that it phones home and the kind of management that an administrator has access to. You were telling me about some of the uh, features like publishing and, uh, and, and auto runs. So tell me about some of those as an administrator. What can I, what can I do for my users? Well, um, using Safe Console, which is the, uh, the management console, uh, you can remotely reset the drives, you can recover lost passwords, you can even recover lost data. Uh, and you get a full file audit trail of everything uh, that's copied to the device. So I can see if somebody's you know, copied files to and from, what machines they've plugged the, the yeah. drive into? I mean, the, the user, the machine, what file, what time, uh, you, you get the, the full Password trail. attempts? Yeah. So I, I mean, could see if somebody, if somebody lost their drive, I could see if somebody nefarious picked it up and tried to yeah. unlock it? Yeah. Oh, what could you do? Could you wipe the data from there you or what? You can do that, yeah. I mean, either you can uh, reset it, um, from the from the say, console interface, or you can just wait for for whoever found it to to plug it in, and uh, unless they got, get get a connection to the console, uh, yeah. the device will uh, erase itself. I think it's really interesting. You were talking about being able to push files to the actual drive. How does that work? Well, uh, that is a feature we call the publisher. It allows you to uh, to send files from a central repository onto all the devices in your corporation. Uh, files such as the prize list, for example, or even portable applications. Right, so if I've got like a sales team and I've got a PowerPoint template for our sales demos and I want them to be using the new version, you know, the updated cover sheet for the TPS report, I could send that updated TPS report to all of my employees over the USB drive using something kind of similar to group policies, really. Uh, yeah, it's connected to the Active Directory. I mean, uh, when you change the file on the central server, uh, the new files will be pushed onto all the devices. So. I mean, everything is done automatically. I mean, nobody has to, to find the new price list, uh, you know, just to get updated uh, values. Right. And not just the, uh, the the ability to publish files, but you're saying you could even tell the system to run a command? You can do that, yeah. Uh, I mean, we've all heard about and feared the uh, the auto run from uh, USB devices. Right, like the USB switch blade. Yeah. yeah. But using the console, you can actually specify a command centrally. The trusted administrator specifies a command to run when you unlock the device. 
So you could... So it could be something as simple as net use this printer on the network so that they yes. get access to some network to, shares. Yeah, and you can even ask the user beforehand for a username and a password, which is stored on the encrypted partition. What kind of crazy stuff have you seen people, you know, administrators doing with that technology? Uh, well, quite a lot of people have actually used it to set up VPN tunnels. That's an interesting way to deploy VPNs. Yeah, I mean, you unlock your device and automatically you get a VPN tunnel. Uh, it's really convenient for the user because they don't have to find the, the right application, the right command to, to use. Everything just happens automatically for them. Now, there's a whole lot of other awesome management features, but let's just talk about the user side. So, uh, if I'm a user and say like I'm in a, a meeting and I want to share a file on my device with some other colleagues, am I going to have to pull out a non-secure USB drive, copy the file over to it, and then share that, or how, how am I going to do that? No, no, no. Because uh, I don't want to give my, my master password out to everybody at the meeting. No, I mean, you should never give away your, your, your secret password to the device. Okay. Uh, that is why we developed EasyShare. Uh, which is a way to, to store files on the device, uh, not on the public drive and not on the uh, encrypted drive, but on a hidden volume uh, and, and using software en encryption, you can actually store a, a small subset of files uh, using a different password. Okay, so uh, then you just give that password out to yeah. the people at the meeting. I mean, you make up a, 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 an easy to, to remember temporary password. Now, if I plug this into uh, my computer and say I need to get access to it, but I don't have internet access, it can't phone home, am I still going to be able to get at my data? Yes, you will. And I mean, if the, I'm away on extended leave without internet access for, say, like a month, after a while, will it eventually expire and say, no, you need to phone home to the server before we can give yeah, it to you? Yeah, you can do that. Uh, I mean, when you plug it in uh, and you don't have access to, say, console, if too many days have passed, uh, of course, you, you configure it and you turn this feature on. Right. It will uh, either disable itself or even reset itself. Uh, that's a way to, to automatically enforce that uh, devices don't get lost. I mean, if somebody dr loses the drive, they're probably going to, you know, not want to, to say that to you, um, but, you know, keep, keep silent right. about it. Okay. And, and this way, you, you get it reset anyway. Nice. Now, what about as the user, am I able to use this on Windows, on Mac, on Linux? Yes, it, it works on uh, Windows and Mac and Linux as well. Uh, the management system only works on uh, Windows and Mac though. Okay, so if I'm a Linux user, I can still unlock it, get at my data? Yes, you can. Now, how do I do that? Well, it's a simple command line tool. You know, you simply type, type it in, enter your password, and then you have uh, like a new volume. Okay, uh, but does the but you said it doesn't work with the management console. So if I uh, deploy it to Linux users, they don't get the ability to push commands and no. documents or any of that stuff. No, it's mm. just uh, an encrypted drive. Is that a, is that a plan for the future? Yes, we're planning on releasing it uh, hopefully this year. Awesome. And where can people find out more about uh, Blockmaster? Well, uh, go to our webpage, uh, blockmastersecurity.com, or uh, even visit Kingston's homepage. Great. Thank you so much. Nice talking to you. Last week's trivia question was, from March 5th, 1975 to December of 1986, this club of computer hobbyists would meet in the Silicon Valley area. And the answer to that trivia was the Homebrew Computer Club. Yay! This week's trivia is in Tron. I'm an avid fan of Tron. Characters that are depicted battling in the digital world are called what? And to your answer, over at hack5.org slash trivia for your chance to win some Hack5 swag. We'll be right back after a brief word from our sponsor. If you're a sysadmin or want to secure any kind of website, you know you need to be using SSL. It's critical for securing e-commerce transactions, online forms, email, corporate intranets, really any kind of data. And if you're looking for an SSL certificate or looking to switch out your current SSL provider, you should check out domain.com's Thought SSL. I like their Thought SSL 123 product. Well, for three main reasons. First of all, it builds trust. Thought has been around for a long time and is one of the most trusted names in SSL. It's easy, the Thought SSL 123 is all you need to encrypt your site. It's got the strongest encryption available and the validation is so quick, you'll get your certificate issued almost immediately. And it's affordable. Use coupon code HACK5, it's less than 40 bucks a year. That's the best price for an SSL 123 on the web, period. Bottom line, 
If you want to use SSL, and pretty much everyone should, try Domain.com's SSL123. And I gotta say, Domain.com's been sponsoring Hack5 for over a year now, and we couldn't be happier. We've got our own Hack5.org on them, and it's running great. So I definitely recommend you give them a try. You can get a you know, domain for less than 10 bucks a year, and reliable hosting for less than five. So support Hack5 by supporting Domain.com. Your next big idea starts at Domain.com. All right. I'm on. There we go. I think we're all on. That just about wraps up this episode of Hack 5, but before we get going, you know that there's a couple of things that we need to cover. Right, Janet? Yes, like, yes. aw, like emails. Yeah. <laughs> Toby writes, now that I'm adhering to the tech, trust your techno last way of life, I figure you're my best chance for a quality fix. I have an yeah, issue that I would love to see how you would resolve. I work at a nonprofit food producer, Oh, that's cool. cool. Thanks. That provides millions of servings to food feeding programs worldwide every year. We're running, we're running as much open source goodness as we possibly can. There you go. Yeah, sweet. So that we can direct as much revenue to the feeding programs as possible. I have a VM called Windows Terminal Server running a software package that requires a USB software key. I need a cheap or free way to hack or bypass to overcome the lack of ability to have non-storage USB pass-through. Right, non-storage USB pass-through can be an issue with uh, virtual machines. I know that it is with Proxmox. Uh, I've successfully done like all sorts of things, like even Wi-Fi USB dongles and things like that nature with yeah. VirtualBox. But with Proxmox, um, they actually recommend a product of all things because they have not figured out that feature yet. Uh, the product that I recommend in their wiki is actually USB redirector, and I gotta say, it's kind of great because it is free in Linux. Okay, in now Linux. I know that you said that you've got a uh, Windows box. It is available from incentivespro.com. Uh, for Windows, it's gonna run you about 60 some euro. Um, is that per year? Or just no, it's, it's just what it says. I, I don't see anything about here about any licensing or anything. Um, but it's pretty neat because you can take a physical machine, it has to be, and plug in any USB device and then run their client on any machine. It could be a virtual machine. That's and cool. essentially that USB port is redirected. I know, yeah. it's a pretty good name. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it so works. I, like, I think that's pretty cool. You should check that out. And Nate writes, I'm a sysadmin working on transferring our salespeople over to new laptops. Cool. Today I convinced one of them to purchase either a large cap flash drive or an external hard drive. So he brings in an HP 500 gig gigabyte simple safe portable hard drive that does not require a power cord. That's cool too. He was going to start copying data on his own but finds out the hard drive box had previously been opened so he wants me to look at it, look it over first and make sure that it's clean and I'm thinking to myself, I have auto run turned off and this isn't a U3 device so I have no worries about a CD EMU partition like U3. If someone opened that if someone that opened it put anything malicious on there. Much to my surprise, once I plugged it in on my Windows 7 machine, it ran something. WTF just happened. Yeah, <laughs> what just happened? Turns out there is an HP virtual CD partition containing an autorun.inf and a file called hplauncher.exe, which is about 552 kilobytes. Really? Huh, you know, we might, have, we might know a little bit something here about auto runs and USB, especially if you've been with us since the second season. Yeah. In fact, I was actually over at RSA, we were talking to uh, Memorex, uh, no, not Memorex, I'm sorry, Kingston. Kingston? Just talking, yeah, and uh, I was actually talking to the guy as we were walking around the show floor, and he was explaining to us that essentially U3 is gone because the licensing fees and everything mm. were so expensive because what the developers had to do, say like you were Skype sorry. and you wanted to get your app on there, you would have to you know, not only license the technology, but you had to rewrite your code and then your code would sit on the shelf yeah. for forever. So it would be old by the time people plugged it in and, and you had to pay for the stuff before they even made any of the drives. It was just, you know, he said it was a nightmare and that everybody just, including them, dropped it. Um, and then as you guys know, you know, uh, Microsoft had a, was it, well, it was an advisory back in 09, I think it was, let's see, 967940, the security <laughs> advisory for auto runs. That's been recently uh, regarding Windows XP because it changed the functionality in Vista and 7. But, uh, but they recently added an update on uh, Windows 
this update so that auto run to INF is not going to work on like removable storage mm -hmm. the way it was previously. Still works on CDFS partitions. And hello, HP, for you know rocking out with your new 500 gig drive that allows those mischievous types to, to use that. And go his salesperson for actually checking up on it. Oh, this box was opened? Eh, I don't think most salespeople would. Well, you know, <laughs> I've done a lot of admin work for a lot of, you know, different clients and stuff, and I do not always get the, uh, I want your users. Can I get your yeah. users that, like, come to you first? Like, I'm going to plug this in, but let me check with IT first. Check with IT first. What? Sweet. Yeah, most yeah. people just, like, you know, pick up a USB device on the floor. And well, that, like, that's oh. a big vector of attack, too. Like, a lot of penetration tests will, like, litter a, you know, a parking lot of, like, a bank or something with USB drives, and people are like, oh, look, a USB drive. <laughs> You know, but now, so bad. Yeah, but finding a USB drive in the ground now is like a hay penny or something. But a 500 gig hard drive, who's gonna pass oh, that up? I you know. <laughs> mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. And now for our Technoless photo of the week. If you have got the Technoless like Jason with his custom Hack 5 LCD screen on his Logitech keyboard, that's Ooh. really cool. I want one of those keyboards. I have that same keyboard. Send me the file. <laughs> Send me the, I, I want yeah, contact. email him the file. Email That's me. so cool. What's up, Jason? Show your pride over at feedback at hack5.org. Send us your photos. Woohoo! Also, if you want to support the show free and easy, it's really easy. All you have to do is go over to hack5.org slash subscribe to find all of the details on how you can get the episode delivered to you automatically if you're rocking iTunes or if you watch it streaming on the web through like YouTube, you can subscribe there. It really helps us out and we thank you so much for showing your support that way. And we also just restocked all of our Wi-Fi pineapples. So if you want to support the show, go over to hack5.org slash store and pick up some Hack5 goodies. All right. Until next week, I'm Darren Kitchen. I'm Shannon Morse. Trust your techno lust. Trust your techno lust. <laughs>